Adobe FrameMaker 2019 provides a guided workspace to support you as you define elements and create your element definition document. I'll complete my first EDD and create a valid topic. This includes a title, body, and other content that can guide authors once applied to a template. In building my EDD, I'll use simple element names. For example, I'll use P for paragraph or I for italic. Names are just for our convenience. If you wanted to name a paragraph just para, just P, or even the full word paragraph, it's completely fine. Just be consistent. Looking below the current topic in the structure view, you can see a black triangle. This shows the location of the insertion point. At this location, it's simple to just double click and insert a new element. The nested tag is automatically inserted. I'll type in title. The guided interface indicates where elements are missing. You can see a red box in the structure view. By clicking above and to the right of it, the insertion point is moved and the elements catalog updated. Next, I'll double click container from the elements catalog. This inserts the container as well as a nested child element. In the title that I'm creating, I want to allow authors to type content. To do so, I'll define the container by typing in the less than symbol, then the word text, and then the greater than symbol. This is all typed directly into the general rule element. To keep things tidy, you can collapse the element once it has been defined. I'll proceed to add another element. The element catalog continuously updates based on where I have my insertion point. This makes it quick to continue to double click to add more content. Next, let's add both a container and a general rule to the element. The guided environment supports me in developing the EDD. When I insert the container element, a nested child element is added automatically. Now I develop the general rule for the body of my document. My rules allow an optional paragraph, then one or more section elements. After the P, I typed a question mark. The question mark indicates an optional element. That is, the P can be inserted once or not inserted, and in either case, the resulting structure is still valid. Next, I typed section followed by the plus sign. This indicates a required and repeatable element. The finished general rule means an author may or may not choose to insert a single introductory paragraph in the body, but is required to insert at least one section. Let's jump ahead a few steps and look at another completed element. The full general rule for the P element is completely enclosed within parentheses. This groups three options together. The pipe symbol between them indicates an OR statement. Therefore, the author can insert text or italic or insert an unordered list. Text is always optional, and an author could choose to type in nothing at all. I've also ended the syntax with an asterisk. This is the symbol used to indicate zero or more. Text is always optional and always repeatable. Authors can choose to type nothing or write the complete works of Shakespeare in a massive run-on paragraph if they wish. Text has no limit. Since we are only discussing structure, let's skip ahead and see what a finished EDD for the entire topic might look like. The finished structure contains the elements we've discussed. This includes topic, title, body, P, and section. It also defines italic as text the user types into the document. The unordered list is defined as one or more list items because of the use of the plus sign. Lastly, the list item also contains text. At this point, I have created a valid and complete structure and am ready to test the EDD by importing it to a template.